Good morning, New Dawn. Good morning, Pastor Joanne. Good morning, Joanne. good morning. I'm so excited. There's a lot of reasons I'm excited today. But man, I am so excited because if you've been with us uh, in these services for this year, you know that we only have one more day tomorrow left for fasting. Yes. Our church Hallelujah. has been on a 21 day time of fasting and prayer. It has been unbelievable. God is good. He is faithful. If you're a guest with us today, maybe I, I should have even just said this first. Welcome. My name is Pastor Erwin Guevara. This is my wife, Joanne Guevara. And we're just glad to be that you're on with us today. And I want to tell our New Dawn family, well done. We're so proud of you guys. Today's an exciting day. And I have listen to what I'm saying to you. I have a powerful word that is going to minister to your life. And I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you that the scriptures that I'm going to go through today are going to be so powerful and you are going to read it over and over again. I promise because of the wealth of information, the prophetic words mm -hmm. that are in these scriptures that God is going to speak to us. Amen. But listen, my wife just wants to say something to our guests and then we're going to pray here in a moment. Amen. Yes, so first time guests, we are so happy that you joined us today and we want to hear from you. Yes. So send us an email to connect at newdawnla.com. We'd love to send you two special gifts if you send us your name and your address. So keep in touch. Yeah, that is awesome. Amen. So listen, we're going to pray and get ready uh, for worship here. I can't wait to just share with you guys and encourage you. And I'm telling you, God is going to speak powerfully today. So my wife is going to pray as we get ready for worship. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you, Lord. Yes, we Lord. thank you for your presence that is here to touch thank every you, heart, Daddy. every life. Father, we thank you that you're the burden remover, Lord. Mm. We thank you that, Father God, no matter, Father, God, what feelings you. we have today, what we're going through, we thank you that you are here, yes. Lord. And you make all things new, Father. You make all things new. You want to renew us. You want to heal us. You want to encourage us. So, Father, thank we you, just God. bow our heads and our yes. hearts to you right now and we say welcome we just put everything aside all the cares of the world we just push mm. everything to the side lord you, just lord. to hear from you and we give mm. you this time lord to just lift up your holy name as we just give ourselves to you once again and we just thank you for your presence in jesus name amen, amen. hey listen would you prepare your heart not only during worship, but would you in the name of Jesus prepare your hearts to receive a powerful message today that is going to revolutionize your life. Amen. So let's go into worship right now and we're going to give God some glory. Amen. New Dawn Christian Village family and friends. I am so glad that you chose to be with us this morning and worship with us this morning. If you could just take a moment and just think and reflect about the ultimate sacrifice that God has made for us. I just thank God. I'm so grateful and thankful for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. I don't feel that I'm worthy, but he saw that I was worthy and he sees that you're worthy. I encourage you to worship with us this morning, right wherever you are, you can lift your hands and sing praises to our King. Hallelujah. We just lift you higher, God. It's a Wiped away 
It's your boy Deacon Woods. I'm so excited to be with you all this morning. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for the Word of God by Pastor Irwin. God bless you all. Hey, New Dawn family. Listen, you know, as we get into the Word right now, I just want you to take a moment and just begin to give God glory. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we were able to go through this time of fasting and prayer. Father, we have one more day tomorrow. And I declare over your people that they're going to hear your voice louder this year, that they're going to hear your voice clearer this year, that in the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you that all harm that the enemy planned for them, that the plan is spoiled in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that your yoke destroying power, Lord God, is going to flow through your servants, Lord God. God, I thank you that no plan of the devil will flourish in our life. Lord, I thank you, Father God, you're dealing with the enemy. Father, we have taken the first part of this year and given it to you. And so we say, God, be glorified, be lifted up and be worshipped. Oh, Father, I bless your people. And I thank you as we finish out this fasting, Lord God, one more day. I thank you, Lord, that supernatural things will take place in their family, in their jobs, in their business, Father, in their emotions, in their spirit, that you're just releasing everything we talked about, every message we shared this year. In, in January of 2021, you're going to ca cause a flourishing in their life. We thank you for supernatural multiplication and increase in their life. We just rejoice, Father. Father, to worship you with fasting and prayer. We thank you that our life, we're a living sacrifices according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We're a living sacrifice. And it is our pleasure, Father, to give you our heart and give you our life. So bless this word today, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, man. We got to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate what God has done. We are running into the rest of this year in the name of Jesus. I'm believing for the most radical 11 months of your life 
in Jesus' name, that God would do the supernatural. You know, we've been in a series talking about our values for 2021 and some things, some questions to ask ourselves in five key areas, some things that the Lord has challenged us on. We're actually on our last of those five today. And we talked about family and relationships. We talked about uh, finances, Number three, we talked about last week person, our personal well-being, how God cares about that. If you didn't see that uh, teaching, you need to get that teaching. Just go to YouTube or Facebook, look in our history, you'll see that. But today we're going to talk about spiritual growth. And God wants you to grow spiritually. Amen? God wants you to grow in the fullness of Him and who He is. God is big and He is great and He wants to work through you and in you your life. You know, we're going to study the book of Ezekiel right now in, in chapter 47, which I guarantee you that by the time I'm done teaching out of this chapter, the first 12 verses, I believe you will go back over and over and over because it is a word to our church. It is a word to your life and you will never be the same after getting the revelation from this book because I will tell you this, my life is not the same after studying this and going through it in my heart, in my life. Actually, a couple of Wednesdays ago, we did a Bible study. And in that Bible study, I brought up Ezekiel uh, uh, chapter 47. And I want to let you know that uh, some revelation started going forth. And I just said, you know what, God, there's just way too much here. I need to teach on this. And God told me, teach it when you talk about spiritual growth. So what is happening in the book of Ezekiel? The book of Ezekiel is actually broken up into three main parts. So what happens is, is of course, as we read in many books of the Bible, Israel and God's people rebelled. They were actually put into exile with the Babylonians. And so what happened is, is that in this a prophetic book, because it's actually a prophetic book of not only what was going to happen in their time or in their time frame, but even now in the church, it's just really, really important. Uh, they were in exile due to rebellion. Uh, the, the book deals with the promise or prophecies of restoration. Amen. God is a restoring God. He doesn't leave us in our mess. That even though they rebelled, God began. Ezekiel 37 is one of the greatest chapters in all the Bible where God, he, he, where he gives Ezekiel a vision and he takes him into a valley of dry bones and he tells him to prophesy, to speak life into these dead bones, which actually represented the army of God or God's people. And, and he's telling Ezekiel, prophesy, speak to us. So he's talking about restoration. But the latter half of the book uh, actually is a huge uh, 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 prophetic insight into the birthing of the church. And let me explain that. So just give you context. And that is the birthing of the church, of course, took place when Jesus said it is finished. He hung on the cross. The church of Jesus Christ was birthed when he resurrected three days later. Amen. We Christianity, amen, with a living savior, the one who, who, who never sinned on the earth was birthed. Come on now, was birthed. But here's where the church took off, where they needed one thing, and Jesus gave them a promise. He said, I'm going to send you the Comforter. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Go in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. And Ezekiel, and uh, listen, uh, uh, all those years ago, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, prophesied this, and it is so powerful to see. So God wants to deal with your spiritual growth today, and He's going to give us some things in Ezekiel 47 that is going to encourage you. So let's just get right into it. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 to 12. It says this, The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Now I want to remind you of something that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. You are the temple. You are the dwelling place of God. And he says, listen, right here, he says that there was some water that was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. 
And I want to, yeah, there's two big things that are right here. Come on, and I can preach and just go right into us on a different direction. But there's an altar and there's a temple. And in, in the New Testament, the altar that you are to place yourself on is, and that God deals with is the altar of your heart where you are a living sacrifice for God, that you walk after God. So we're dealing with an altar and with a temple and there's some water that is flowing from underneath the temple. This is so powerful. Verse two, he then brought me out through the north gate and he led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. It was just trickling, just a little bit of water. But check this out. As the man went eastward with a measuring line. Come on, everybody out there say measuring line. Say that, measuring line. In his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits. And then led me through water that was ankle deep. So this water is trickling from, from the temple, right underneath the temple, the altar, and this water is trickling. And here in, in, in this prophetic vision, the Lord, the Lord is showing Ezekiel, and this man has a measuring line. And he goes out, and now that trickle of water turned into water that was a little bit high, about ankle deep, about this high. As a man went eastward with a measuring line, he measured, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 4, he measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. Come on now. So as he went further out, as he went further out with the measuring line, all of a sudden now this water was knee deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was waist deep. And he measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep, deep enough to swim in. A river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. I want to explain this to you that that river that is overtaken, the, the, that water represents the power of the Holy Spirit. It represents that Jesus said that out of you will flow rivers of living water. God wants you to grow spiritually. God wants you to grow and flourish spiritually. And that happens through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit revealing God's word in your life. See, when, when he says you are a living water, that out of you will flow rivers of living water, I'm sorry, that out of you will flow, it is moving. It is your receiving and giving out, receiving and giving out. And there's a vision right here that Ezekiel is seeing. He's seeing into the future, the church of Jesus Christ. Come on now, this is so good because this is only going to get more powerful as I read these verses. Verse 8. Let me, let, me go to verse, let me go to verse 6 right here and read it one more time. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. And when I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, which is actually the Jordan Valley where it enters the Dead Sea. Everybody knows what the Dead Sea is right now. It's just a, 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 a big place, a big sea just full of salt. Nothing can live there, right? And the latter end of that verse is when it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. God is showing Ezekiel this vision that this water that comes from the temple from underneath the altar and this water that is flowing, come on now, in the church, he said, it will flow like a river. And when it empties into places that are salty, that are dead, this water will bring it to life. The salty water there becomes fresh. And verse 9 says, swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. Hallelujah. Come on now. I'm excited this morning. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to take what they've been given, to take of the word that they've been eating for years and allow the Holy Spirit to work through them and get this message out to the whole world. 
And let God use us with rivers of living water. Wherever the river flows, swarms of living creatures will live. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Hallelujah. Verse 10, fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedai to En Eglaim, and there will be places for spreading nets. Hallelujah, that's the harvest. That's the harvest. When the river flows, you'll be ready with fishermen that are ready because the water brings life. And when the Holy Spirit is moving, the nets are ready for the harvest of Jesus. Come on. Look, look what he says in verse 11. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Why would he leave that little negative verse in the middle of all these awesome verses. You know why? Let me read it again. But the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. You know why? Because a swamp and a marsh is stagnant water. Let me say that again. A swamp and a marsh is stagnant water. That means the water just sits there and does nothing. It doesn't move. And that's what happens. Come on now. That's where, 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 where salt water that's fresh turns into salt and yuck and junk because it's not doing anything. And listen, God said, out of you will flow rivers of living water. I want you to do something with what I give you. It's time to grow in the things of God. I love this. Verse 12, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Because the, ri the, wa the river, the water is flowing. Man, it started as a trickle. Come on, it started as a trickle from underneath the altar. Come on, out of the temple. It just started as a trickle and it went to ankle deep. And then it went into knee deep. And then into waist deep. And then all of a sudden it's this river that's out of control. And guess what this, that's important? Is that when the river has taken off and it overtakes you, you can't do things. Come on now, I'm preaching good. You can't do things in the natural you can't do things out of your own strength. You decide to do them as the river leads you and as the river takes you. You know, at this church, let me tell you something. We pride ourselves on something huge, and that is we wait to hear the voice of God, to seek the direction of God on where we're going and what we're doing and what we're teaching. Recently, someone asked me, hey, you know, what do you think about doing this, you know, a sermon on this or whatever? And I said, listen, I appreciate that. And you know what? I took it to prayer, but I let them know every single time I come on a Sunday or a Wednesday, I ask the Father, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do, Father God? I want to do your will. I want to speak to your people, the living word. So fill me with fresh water. Baptize me in your spirit. I do that every week. You can ask my wife. Because I want to know, I don't want to hear Irwin's opinions. I want to hear what God is saying through his word. And listen, under the anointing and unction of the Holy Spirit of God. Let's go into this, finish these scriptures. Again, verse 12, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither. Come on, their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month, I've been declaring this over myself in the name of Jesus, every month they will bear fruit. And I say to you, every month you will bear fruit. Every month I prophesy over you today that every month you will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Listen, if you want to see flourishing in your 2021, let the water of the Holy Ghost come into every area of your life. Let the water of heaven, let God's spirit be infiltrated into every aspect of your life and you will see growth like you've never seen before. Because you're connected to the sanctuary. And I'm not talking about a building in L.A. I'm talking about to the sanctuary of heaven. Where you get before God and you grab the horns of the altar and you say, God, I got to have you. I need you, God. I want to know you, God. Come on. God is looking for worshipers that worship him in spirit and in truth. 
It's time for the games and the, and, and the entertainment garbage to be gone in the name of Jesus. It's time for the Holy Spirit to infiltrate people's lives. So it's changed forever, real change. Where it describes here, he says, I see banks and trees are growing because the water is touching them. There's fruit, there's fish, there's fishermen ready on the side with nets. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is breathing on people and he's confirming the message that, he, that God's people are preaching, which is Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He is, the, he is God's son and he was perfect. And he was born of a virgin and he lived on this earth and he lived a sinless life. And he went to a cross unjustly, but he went for us and he died on the cross for the sins of the world. Yours and mine for all sin once and for all. But he didn't just die there. He wasn't just some prophet or just some, some great guy. But he was the son of God and, and hell could not hold him because he had no sin. And he resurrected just like he prophesied. And just like the Bible prophesied for generations and generations that the Messiah would come and rescue the world. And he resurrected three days later and he is alive. And he appeared to over 500 witnesses. And he gave, him, he gave him an instruction, wait for the promise of my father. And the Holy Spirit was poured out and the church began to grow. Wow. Listen, last part of that verse, verse 12. Their fruit, your fruit, will serve for food. And their leaves, make it personal, and your leaves for healing. Let me say that again. Your fruit will serve for food and your leaves for healing. The fruit that you bear, people are going to take what you give them of the gospel. They're going to take what you give them of the word of God. And they're going to, their lives are going to be changed. Listen, and the leaves, as you're growing leaves on the branches of your life, as you're growing spiritually and the leaves are flourishing, it'll bring healing to people's lives. Not only healing spiritually, but healing to their physical body, healing to their minds because they're being tormented by the devil, healing in all kinds of ways. Because Jesus is the healer. And only through him can we find the fullness of life. I want to let you know that as we read Ezekiel 47, growth is measured. There was different levels of growth. There was ankle deep. There was knee deep. There was waist deep. And then there was like, I am submerged in the glory of God. And people have a choice. You can walk around if you want with the trickling. You can walk around with the ankle deep. Let me give you a news flash about knee deep. You can be knee deep, but you can still in your own physical ability walk around and get around and, and the water is not overtaking you. You know, you can go waist deep and if it's flowing, you still have this, your strength in your own natural self to walk around in waist deep water. But when the river starts flowing and it's over your head, that's when you know I'm not in control. It's only God. Listen, when the word and the spirit connect together, when the word of God and the Holy Spirit in your life work together, you will grow and you will flourish. You will touch dead things and people that are dead spiritually and bring them to life. The fresh water you bring them will give them life. You will bear and produce fruit. I declare that over you in Jesus' name. Stay connected to the sanctuary and the water will flow. Every time God's word goes forth, I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. Hear me every time in this broadcast, in this time together, every time the word of God, the word of God goes forth. You have a choice on how you receive what he is saying and what he's doing. And through this scripture, you know what it is? Ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. And the river. And many people are comfortable with ankle deep. But God is pulling you upward and forward. God wants the river to run and overtake you. God wants you.
to grow spiritually. So where are you? Right now, make a choice to go to another level. Where are you? Are you a knee-deep person? Come on now, would you take a plunge and say, I'm going waist-deep? Are you waist-deep? Why don't you take a plunge and just go say, I want the river? And here's what I love about God. There's some people that say, well, what if they're ankle-deep? Should they be praying for the river? Absolutely. 100%. You don't have to go to small little levels. You can just jump in. And the river will take you. It's all about your heart and hunger. Do you want to grow spiritually? I can't make you grow. I can lead you to the brook and you're the one that's going to have to drink. I could show you, I could show you the river, but you're the one that's going to have to jump in. God wants you to spiritually grow. How can, how can you grow? So let me give you some practical things on how you can grow. Why don't you set a goal of reading a chapter a day of the Bible? You can grow. That's a practical thing. Set a goal of reading a chapter a day before you go to sleep. No matter what, you will read a chapter of the Bible a day. Prayer and listening. I love this. Would you pray and listen at the same time? Meaning pray and then when you're done praying, Take a moment and just get quiet. Try to find someplace quiet where you can get private with God. Pray and just take a moment and listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit because He's always speaking. God will speak to you. God will speak to you. You will know that God is speaking to you. Don't let some person with little faith tell you that God doesn't speak. It's all in your head or, you know, is it? No, God speaks every day, every moment, any time. He will speak to you. Your heart will bubble up. You will burn knowing that God has given you instruction. When you read the Bible, I love this. I wrote this down. Read and understand the context. Begin to ask questions as you're reading the Bible. Like, for example, why is Jesus there? Why is he in that city? Why did he visit that purpose? person's house? Why were those people around him? What is the setting that, that it's in? Ask yourself those questions because it will paint a picture rather than just some words like Jesus. Da, 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 da. No, the Bible becomes alive when you open yourself for it to be alive. You begin to see things like, why was Jesus talking to that person that way? Why was he loving over here and then he reprimanded this person there? What is going on? What is the significance of Jesus doing this? And I'm using Jesus as a right. You, you could use the same thing with any Bible character or any story in the Bible. Understand the why. Understand the why God is doing it. Ask God to show you why is he doing that? How about the woman at the well? I think about her and you begin to, to sit there and say, why was, it, why was it not common for Jesus to talk to that woman and where she was from? Why did the disciples, were they like, whoa, why is he talking to her? These are things that you study and find out. How was, why was she amazed at some things that Jesus said? Ask yourself that question. How about Zacchaeus, one of my favorite stories in all the Bible. Zacchaeus climbed a tree so he could see Jesus. Why did Jesus point Zacchaeus out and tell him, Zacchaeus, I must come to your home and eat with you today. I must go to your house. See, if you begin to study Zacchaeus' name and things that Jesus did, you'll begin to understand the power of the scriptures. But you got to ask yourself questions and want to learn. Why did Jesus send out the disciples two by two? Why did he do that? Was he showing us an example of the power of God in the, in the future after his resurrection and how he would, we would change the world? The things that the disciples saw when they went two by two, I'm using this as an example, but the things that they saw were things that Jesus was seeing in the spirit, that he saw it happening in the spirit realm. Let me just tell you something. There are reasons. This is not a boring book. This is the most powerful, living, exciting book ever, ever, because it is God. 
John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and all things were created by Him and for Him, and through Him all things were made. All things were made, including you. The Bible is living. It's alive. It's not a boring book. And God is challenging you today to grow spiritually. Ask the Holy Spirit about learning the Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit, why, why is this happening right here, Holy Spirit? Why, Spirit of God? It's His job. It's the Holy Spirit's job to give you counsel in the Word of God. He reveals Christ in the Scriptures. Just remember that people remember stories. Learn stories in the Bible. When you read a story in the Bible, don't just read a couple of verses. Read the whole chapter. And listen, many times when I want to understand something in Scripture, I not only read the chapter I'm reading, but I read two, sometimes three chapters before leading up to that to find out what is the setting of what is going on. Because I want to understand why, how did we end up here? People remember stories. So when you share with people, they'll remember a story. You give them one verse, they might not remember that, but you tell them a story of something in the Word, they will remember it. Accountability is important. That will help you to grow spiritually. Our Wednesday night services at 7 p.m. on a Zoom are powerful, and you will grow spiritually there. They're available for anyone. And the last thing I want to say to you is that if you want to grow spiritually, the one thing that we're offering and that you should have already received the information but if not, we want to get this out to you. But we're starting a Bible reading program tomorrow. We're actually starting uh, in, in the book of uh, Mark and in the book of Luke. And we're going and, and we're not doing, uh, 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 we're not, I'm sorry, in, in the book of, of Mark and the book of John. My apologies. And we're starting there and we have a Bible reading program with the chapter verse, everything for every day for, for almost the whole rest of the year that you can go through the New Testament. And we're going to go through it together. And what I love about what we did, if you saw it, is that, you know, like, for example, the date of whatever the date is that you're reading. Let's just say in the future, it's June 12th. Well, you don't have to sit there and say, man, where are we? You could just go right to your page and look up June 12th, and it'll show you exactly the chapter we're reading that day. Come on, do that with us. Make a challenge that starting tomorrow, you're going to read the New Testament with us. Amen? We want to get that to you. You could simply reach out to us at connect at newdawnla.com. If you don't have that, we want to get that reading program to you. We can send it as a PDF. You could print it out. Amen. And it'll be a blessing to you. Everyone should have it printed, put it on your refrigerator, put it wherever. But let me say this to you. God wants you to grow spiritually. And it's time for us to grow. God is calling us upward and he's calling us forward in the power of His presence. It's time to jump in the river. It's time to give Him a, a right now praise. It's time to give Him the best of what we have in our hearts. Amen. Because He's so worth it. Do you want to grow spiritually? I want to say this to you. It's up to you if you want to grow spiritually. It's what you do. Amen. No one can help. No one can make you grow spiritually. You have to decide to grow spiritually. And I gave you some practical things that you can watch this video again and you can go over those different things that you can do on a practical level to grow spiritually. Everything begins with His Word. And so I want to challenge you. If you don't have a, 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 a specific diet of the Word of God in your life right now, set a goal, one chapter a day. And, and look and, and get our reading program that we have that we're going to go through as a church. Amen. And you're going to grow spiritually. You know, I believe that you are challenged today to draw closer to Jesus. Because growing spiritually has to do with drawing closer to Him. It's not about being more religious on this earth. It's about being connected to heaven, to the Father who loves you. And let me tell you this. The greatest way that we're connected and it all begins is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And maybe you're watching, you've never surrendered your heart to God. You've never yielded yourself and say, Jesus, would you be Lord of my life? You know what Lord means? That means every area. You say, Lord, I invite you into every area of my life. I want the river to overtake me. 
So today, as you're watching this, I want to give you an invitation. Do you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you want to live for God? I'm not challenging you today to just believe in something. I'm challenging you to live something, to know someone, the greatest friend you'll ever, ever have. Would you pray with me right now? Let's pray together. Say, Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, a horrible death for the sins of the whole world. He died for every person that would live, that would sin, every person. He died for all their sin, past, present, and future. So thank you, Jesus. The power of sin is broken. And today, I believe in you. I surrender my heart. I ask you, God, for forgiveness because I have sinned against you. I've gone against your word. And I'm sorry. Forgive me today. I put my faith in Jesus for the cleansing of my sins and the salvation of my soul. I want to serve you today, Jesus. Let the river overtake me and fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I just pray for every person listening and watching. I pray for the power of your Holy Spirit that I'm sensing right now at this pulpit that the power of your glory will minister to people in their homes. That what I'm sensing right now would translate through digital waves and through the atmosphere and would just visit each home as they hear the word of God in this prayer. Baptize people in your presence, your anointing. Let them go to another level today. We say goodbye to weak Christianity. We say goodbye in the name of Jesus to powerless Christianity. Lord, we embrace everything that you have. We say, God, let the river overtake us. So, Father, minister to your people. I thank you right now for miracles, signs, and wonders that you heal bodies, sick bodies, heal minds that were in bondage to sin, that were in bondage to soul ties that we talked about last week. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break those soul ties. We break bondages in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that any manipulation of the devil, those strongholds are broken right now. We tear down the stronghold against us. Father, release your power. I see people getting free right now, Father, in the glory of God. I see people getting free in their home, being baptized in your presence. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. We love you. You are so good. Thank you for this word today. We embrace it. We receive it. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We just say thanks. 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 If you don't have a church home and you don't have a pastor, if you feel so led that you're feeling a pulling to, to New Dawn Christian Village, we want you to email us at connect at newdawnla.com. We want to connect with you. We're going to worship God right now with our tithe and with our offering. It is an honor and a privilege to give God our tithe and our offering. If you know the Father and you know God, then this is a joy to you. It's not a burden. It's not something you religiously do. It's something that you love to do because you know God. You know Him. You know His character and His heart. And I feel the presence of God so strong here today. And I'm telling you, right now is a moment where we worship God and we give God seed. We plant seed in the kingdom. The word tithe means 10%. And the Bible says that the tithe belongs to God. And I want to encourage you today and pray with you as you give your tithe. And an offering is anything above that. And if you give your offering today, we want to pray for that and just pray the blessing of the Lord over you. But it is an honor to worship God with our giving. <clears throat> On the right side of your screen, you're going to see three different ways that you can give. 
You can give through PayPal at newdawnla.com. You can give mailing to our P.O. Box in Los Angeles. And you can give through Cash App. Holy Spirit, just speak to people. Let, let, let them hear your voice. Let them minister to you, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, release your goodness. It is an honor, Father, to worship you with our giving. It is worship. And so we give it to you, Lord, out of a pure heart. Minister to your people. Father, I pray ridiculous blessing on your people in 2021. I just declare it and believe it for them, Father. Minister right now. In Jesus' name, receive our offering, God. Receive our tithe. Bless your people. In Jesus' name. Well, listen, I want to remind you that we have a reading program and uh, that we're gonna, that's going to take us into the rest of the year, uh, into the New Testament. That's clearly outlined for each day for you to read. We want you to get that. If you don't have that, email us at, the, at connect at newdawnla.com. We want to make sure uh, we receive that from you. If you have any prayer requests, amen, you can also uh, email us at prayer at newdawnla.com and we would love to receive that those prayer requests online right now we have online ministers before you leave if you want to throw something up there you're going to have a whole bunch of people pray but i will tell you this let me ask you a question was god not in this service today was god not in this service today he was speaking loud and clear and god is so good this word is so rich go back and read ezekiel 47 let God transform your life. Jump in the river. Jump in the river here in 2021. It's going to be awesome. We're believing for the greatest year you've ever had. And everything begins and ends with God. Amen. So love you guys. We'll see you next week. Invite someone out next week. Share this message with someone. I know it'll be a blessing to them. Love you guys. See you next week.